The Chena River is uh, one of the tributaries of the Tanana drainage, and the Tanana drainage is a tributary of the Yukon River. Out of all the salmon, Chinook salmon spawning in the Alaska portion of the Yukon drainage, 30% of it occurs in the Chena and Salta rivers. So this is one of the most important Alaskan stocks. And it's also a Chinook salmon stock that travels through an urban area. Chinook salmon are an important part of Alaska life. There's a huge um, commercial fishery for them. There's a huge subsistence fishery for them. In the last couple of years, we've seen big declines in Chinook salmon. And so we're trying to get at whether or not the problem is potentially a habitat issue or if it's something that's happening with the juveniles that is creating less numbers going out into the ocean and therefore less numbers coming back in. We want to go back to protecting the river and the environment and the fish. And the only way to do that is to keep all your petroleum, distillates, and any kind of chemicals or, or contaminants from the river. Why are these wetlands and tributaries important to salmon on the Chena River? One of the many functions is actually filtering out dirt and pollutants, and it collects all those things in, in all the vegetation that you see out here and filters it out so the water is clean and clear, which is very important for spawning and rearing habitat of salmon. So I think a lot of people don't realize that everything that happens above a river or a stream in the watershed ends up affecting it downstream. The forests, the side channels, the streams, the sloughs, all of that feeds into the river one way or another. And you can't have a healthy river if all that isn't healthy too. As I spent time in Fairbanks and watched it grow and change over the last almost 30 years, I felt like it was dying by a thousand cuts. There's just little bits of development all over and none of it makes a big difference by itself, but cumulatively, it's really changing the face of Fairbanks. I think most people don't realize that. And I think if most people did, they would be a little more careful about what they did, not only in the water, but around the water. As we all become a little bit more aware of how we are impacted and how we impact the river, we can have a healthier understanding. I mean, there are things that, you know, humans bring to the table, like pollution and uh, garbage and oil and stormwater runoff. But there's also really amazing ways that we can treat those through green infrastructure and participating in leaving riverbanks healthy and restoring the ones that, that aren't anymore. One of the opportunities I have when I'm reviewing projects is to make suggestions to landowners to uh, leave some native vegetation along their stream banks. Riparian buffers help filter out contaminants that come from overland flow, like these trees over here and the vegetation along here will help uh, filter out large stuff like trash and things like that. Plus the growing vegetation will help uh, metabolize some of the fertilizers and things that people might be applying on their property to grow lawns and uh, for their gardens. Thankfully, it's not as a problem up here in the interior as it is elsewhere in the state, but in stream travel of four-wheelers and four-wheel drive, on the upper Chena, we see that sometimes, and that's a spawning area. That area is really important for rearing Chinook salmon, and if we can keep the vehicles out of the river up there, that'd be a big help. Well, the watershed feeds us. It gives us our our playground. You know, we live here for a reason. People live here because they love the wide open spaces. And I think if they know that there's a way to keep it that way, they will do what they can. With a community like Fairbanks, Chena River is its heart. It runs right through the community. It is the reason why the community is here. It was founded because Back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the river boats, which were the way to get to the interior of Alaska, this was as far as they could go. And so recognizing this enormous entity that we have of great value that runs right through the heart of our town and has so much potential. 
to keep juvenile salmon at the level of health that we would want as biologists to maintain these runs, their biggest important factors for them are going to be water quality, water flow, and the riparian habitat. It's essentially all of the habitat real close to the river. We see juvenile salmon using a lot of these areas and these small creeks and sloughs that are going through urban sp spaces just like the area we're standing in here right now. And people think that they're not vital bodies of water, but they truly are. I think that when I was a kid growing up, the Chena River and especially some of the sloughs around the Chena, like Noise Slough, were considered just nasty places. You didn't want to swim in them. You didn't want to drink out of them. You'd get sick if you fell out of your boat. Um, but as Fairbanks has kind of redeveloped the downtown and we now have a stormwater permit for everything that happens in the urban part of the watershed, I think that the, the perception of the Chena has changed significantly. And part of that it has to do with the river actually being cleaner. Salmon is in the Chena River and we don't want it to get polluted because we eat it. We want to filter rainwater because as it drains into the ground it carries any chemicals that it might have picked up with it and it then would drain into the slough which goes into the Chena River which goes to the ocean. So it's one big cycle and we want to make sure that it stays as pure as possible. We've already had someone come up to us and say that they're excited to see that what we come up with and it's kind of rewarding to feel that you are making a difference and that you're going to provide something beautiful to people to look at too. I like living on the riverbank but I realize that it's a, a commitment to keeping a healthy riverbank and in the old days they used to dump old cars over to protect the riverbank and and rocks and stuff and so I've been really grateful for the people that have come and planted willows and done a really nice job of restoring my riverbank. This riverbank restoration project has been very comforting to me to, to know that uh, the little baby fish are resting here and the mother duck and her ducklings are right over here and yeah it, it's a nice part of nature that I really enjoy living here on the riverbank. It's been uh, very frustrating for the sport fishermen that grew up in this area. And for us to get numbers back like we have the last couple years to where um, we feel we could have at least catch and release if not being able to keep one king salmon, we need to continue to do what we're doing right now. In order for us to get back to sport fishing like it was in its heyday, if we keep continue working and, and learning about the process as when they're small and making sure that that habitat is just as good as their spawning habitat, that in conjunction with more conservative fisheries management should uh, help rebuild runs, which it looks like it has the last couple of years. Um, two years is not enough of a trend to hang our hat on. We'd like to see five or six years of that but we feel like we're starting to get a better handle on the effects of urbanization and fishing on adults and juvenile Chinook salmon. Well, I love the Chinook River. It's, it's such a gem to be running through Fairbanks. You gotta be crazy not to support it and try to keep it up, not only for the fisheries, but just the pleasure of the people that live here. Yeah. Well, we've uh, been on the river and had a presence here since 1999. We inherited a lot of wrap that's right under the dock at Pike's Landing. Works like a champ. But the restorative techniques for uh, bank restoration have become uh, kind of like smartphones. It's gotten uh, easier and uh, less expensive to implement, and the product is so far superior and imaginative to uh, just simply pouring a bunch of rock down and then you just kill that section of the river. So we are always advocating for a solution that is a, a, a living based solution. My feeling is that just the aggregate of all the small projects are really, really great in terms of the habitat benefit. And you don't have to be looking at mega projects, but if everybody does a little bit, it would, would really, really help 
As a business and a family, we not only uh, work here on the Chena River, but we also live on the Chena River. And it's really become an important part of our everyday life. And we like to see um, not only ourselves, but everybody in the community doing their part to keep it a, a, a great natural resource that we can uh, continue to use and, and share with our guests for many years to come.